nothing is permanent. Everything changes, but everything stays the same. Um, I always feel like Peter's still here with us. On, and uh, yeah, life, life is a mystery. I haven't been to the garden in the past. You haven't been to this garden since we came through last year. Um, so this will be as much a uh, reintroduction to me as it is uh, to all of you. Things astrological rulerships, uh, um, four elements. The middle garden is divided into north, south, east, west, earth, air, water, and fire, and planted according, accordingly. Um, and it was set up in the shape of a womb. Um, Did you set up the garden? Yeah, I designed the garden and set it up and planted it. I started traveling a few years ago, so I haven't been tending it. Uh, Julia Hitchcock, the local herbalist, has been taking care of it quite nicely for the past few years. Um, it's quite a collection of aromatic, medicinal, magical um, herbs. And uh, yeah, let me introduce everyone. Famous for its healing properties, it's been used in treat skin issues, eczema, um, wounds, burns for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. This one is who? This is calendula. Yeah, ruled by the sun. It's very sun-like, warming and nourishing. Um, easy to infuse in oil and then thicken with beeswax it makes a classic cell for the skin anyone can make it so topical not ingesting topical uh, yeah. people know you can you can drink the flowers like you as can a make tea, a tea. You boil it out yeah yeah just an infusion i wouldn't boil it i would infuse it let okay. it sit in hot water okay and uh, it's great for the digestive tract especially any irritations um, um, <coughs> to the stomach or gastrointestinal system it helps so does it heal or does it clean? No, nope, it heals. It heals. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's basically a wound healer. Okay. Um, and tobacco, besides being used as a sacrament and for smoking, um, it's also a great wound healer, especially for piles and hemorrhoids and uh, because it's such a fiery plant, if you chew tobacco leaf, it really burns. So it, it, it treats anything that has a burning nature. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if you're burnt, it's, uh, it's another thing that tobacco will treat. Like Did you make like burns. a salt out of it? Exactly, you'd make an oil-based salt. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so planting a few through your garden also helps keep the uh, insects back. Oh, good, okay. I yeah, it's kind of, I never really liked that herb. It's kind of a nasty smelling herb, I guess for good reason. Cats will love it. Pass it along. So that's catnip. It stimulates cats, but it's a sedative for humans. So it's used for sleep and as a nervine to calm the nerves. So it calms the mind? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Why do you think that there are delays? Because uh, there wasn't a lot of sun, there was a lot of rain and yeah. clouds. So now it's going to reap that energy? As long as we get enough sun, yeah, they'll catch up now. Um, about this high by now. Yeah, no, no. No, this is. From women only? Yeah. yeah. So Why is it they, that They some recommend you don't drink any royal tea while you're pregnant. Oh. Yeah. 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 I wonder why it is that 
certain things going on. Any royal. Whereas, like, the highest use would work for the male reproductive system. Does it have any toxic pollen? Any what? Toxic pollen? Any royal? In moderation, it's not toxic. But it is a stimulant and it can cause contractions or, you know, during pregnancy. Otherwise, you could bring it up to tea. So does it play around with the hormones of the female reproductive I'm system? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it actually is related to the hormones or not. This is one of my favorites. It's used in baths for beauty. Like it does. It's the same family as celery. Is it angelica? No. No. Close. The lavender is mostly external. And gum. Yeah. Is yeah. I mean, uh, like again, people take it as a calming nerve key or part of a. Uh, okay. formula for okay. nerves. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't be strong, right? It would be mild. It's not as strong as the essential oil. I mean, it has a strong flavor because it has a lot of essential oil. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's added in formulas. Uh, it's internally and It's just not on its own. Apparently, you can make an oil out of the seed. And that's milk thistle, famous milk thistle, excellent for the liver. It's the seeds of the milk thistle that are used. Uh, I agree. St. John's word is, is called hypericum, and the root of the name hypericum is to be hung above the door. So in, traditionally it was hung above doorways to ward off evil spirits. Did you so tell you us? Don't eat that because people have died um, from I don't know heart attacks, basically. Wow. By confusing it with another herb. Uh, were we talking about mugwort the other day? Right here. So mugwort again is a it's the same family as wormwood and prairie steak, the Artemisia family. They're all stimulants. Well, you have the flowers first. Okay, so then the flowers, flowers get turn pollinated. In. Okay. And then they turn into berries. Oh, and then cool. the birds eat them all before you get to them. Oh, I see. You've had <laughs> yeah, experience with this. Okay. Yeah. The birds, birds, all, you know, birds love them. Yeah. Um, anybody care to hazard a guess? Hops. Yeah. Well, you know everything. This is like your fourth time here. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Yeah, so this is hops. The leaves have a little bit of the hop scent. Um, the the strobiles, the flowers of the hops, 
have a resin in them, which oh. is really intensely fragrant. Very, very bitter. Uh, beautiful. It's very leafy. <laughs> yeah. Again, the last year the, the they were all brooding already, and uh, I guess it doesn't like all the moisture because it's not doing. If you squeeze it, yeah, yeah, if you squeeze it, you'll see it slippery and slimy, and the root is even more so. The root kind of oozes out a slippery, slimery, sludge, not sludge, juice. And mm. it's a great for your digestive tract, uh, any irritation, colitis. <laughs> sporadically, <laughs> and it's called a spat. It's like a little finger sticking out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's called calamus. Calamus is a chorus or sweet flag. Um, the leaf has a lot of fragrance, but the root is used medicinally. It's okay. Um, the root is even more... Oh, that smells nice. That it's got a weird smell. So You guys have to pass this around so you can smell it. It's valerian? Valerian. Yeah, it, it, the fragrance is amazing. The root is really smelly. Mm -hmm. That is um, lovely. Mm. Well, there's not much it's here. Yeah. Mm. So that's valerian. Yes, bloodroot is the first flower you'll see in the forest. Um, the, it comes up, a stalk within a sheath, then a beautiful white flower opens, and when after the flower is opened, then the leaf unfurls. I like that word. Oh, the root here. The root actually oozes a liquid that looks like blood. <laughs> Why does it do that? Is it the plant bleeding? Yeah. It has a kind of a latex in it. So there are two types, one that oozes red and one that oozes kind of a salmon color. Mm -hmm. And What's the difference? One is thought to work better in formulas for women and the other one's thought to work better for men. The pink for men and the darker for women? No, the red for men. Apparently. The red for men? Um, it's used in, uh, it's used a lot for sore throats, um, and... So it helps with inflammation? It helps with inflammation, but it's also used in the black cells, the anti-cancer cells. It's, it's an ingredient in quite a few of those forms. Is it more of an antioxidant property that's added to it, or does no, it help remove? No. Um, it's corrosive. It's very... So My son Nathan, he was a baby, strapped in my chest in 1998. I was collecting herbs from the park, cutting, and I brought this. And it ended up here. It grows in bogs and marshes. It's called meadow sweet. Um, it's very calming. It's also used to flavor uh, beer and ale. It can be a bit of an irritant to the skin. Yeah, it crush, you have to smell this, but the leaves <coughs> have the fragrance. Is that a local, like a plant they grew in North America? No. Oh, no. No. That's from a nursery. It's a there are so many varieties, hybrids of Pucara, and they're used as ornamental floral bells. And the flowers are gorgeous. Oh, which, yeah. Which one? Mm -hmm. this is, yeah, this is Pucara. Mm -hmm. Also called coral bells. Oh, and this is ornamental. Okay. Wow, this valerian smells amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here we have a type of chamomile. Oh yeah, okay. But it's probably the non-aromatic kind. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it actually, it's called yeah, it's called non-aromatic chamomile. Mm -hmm.
at that. That's interesting. Absolutely gorgeous. Angelica. Is it Angelica? Yeah. <laughs> Does it taste? You can crush them and smell them. So this is Angelica. The flowers are used in, in bake, baking and cakes and pastry. Uh, the seeds, oh, sorry. Uh, they make an essential mm -hmm. oil from them. You can yeah. squeeze it, you can chew it. Oh. So Angelica, Arc Angelica. So somebody was really into <laughs> angels. You can bury it back inside, in between, and that'll hold it there. Um, or you can make a knot, whatever you like. You can make a knot like this. And if you want, you can make a knot with a loop so that you can hang it afterwards. Anyway, that's the general idea. I think it's better. Hang on, let me do it again. I'm going to do it with two strands. Uh, two or three pieces of grass. One, two, even two. And I twist them together. Stick them, I stick them in the middle. In between, I split. Stick them in the middle. Close to the end, but not all the way. And then I twist them oh, and oh, wrap so you it. Split it and then yeah, you take because one and then you twisting it gives it a lot them. more strength. It holds itself together. It'll dry like that. I do two or three loops around. And the last loop, leave a little extra. And push it through. and create a knot with a loop left over. Here is so you're, you're able to hang it from this. Um, if you want, you can hide the rest of them, and then you can snip off any extra pieces. After you braid it, you'll have little pieces sticking out. Just go over with a pair of scissors and snip them off once it's dry, and you get a really nice looking braid. <laughs> It'll just be a chubby one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. About an inch, inch and a half from the end. All right. Okay. Yeah. You have enough for three good turns. That way you can put tension on it, and you can braid it really straight. Oh, nice. so you're supposed to then go all the way down like that? No, no. no. Yeah, that's yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, Mine's looking a little drunk. <laughs> here, let me have a look. See, see if I, what I was thinking. Um, there's another way of doing it. And then no. just tie it? No. Yeah. That. Approximately. Okay. Oh, okay. Then. You can you can twist it more and then. Okay. Run it through. Like that? That's good. Divide it up into three fairly even pieces, groups. A twist towards the inside. Oh, yeah. 
And if somebody's holding it, you can keep straightening it out. But, and what's going to happen, usually I wait a day or a few hours before I braid it because the grass will dry and shrink. Um, that's why I like to make them really tight, um, especially if you're doing them while they're fresh because they will shrink and get looser and they're only, they always look nicer when they're tight. So what you're saying is, all of ours are not going to look professionally done until tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, just do them tight now, and they'll look good. You kind of have to compensate for yeah. the fact that they're going to shrink. I know there are always little pieces sticking out along the way, and that's fine. Once it dries, you just snip them off with scissors. It's supposed to be a relaxing experience. <laughs> <laughs> Stressing me out over there, yeah. She needs tobacco leaf. <laughs> Hand starts getting tired. You? Yeah. When? Your hand will be tired. No, my, my hand starts yeah, getting tired. Yeah, you're okay? <laughs> I'm good. Okay. So this is pre my development. Pre idea. Well, mine's not working. Mine looks like a vegetable cartoon. It's easier when you have someone to hold it because you can pull against it and keep it straight. Uh, when you're doing it by yourself, the pressure varies from braid from turn to turn and it zigzags. So it's better to wait till it dries before braiding it? It's better to wait a few hours for it to dry a bit. Well, Mom, if you're you going to wait till tomorrow, then you should put it inside a bag or cover it lightly. Mom, will you do mine? You don't have a bag? Sure. Do you want me to hold when it? I get home? Yeah. I'll hold that. Or cloth? I don't have a bag. Okay. I have this little thing like <laughs> no, it's a shopping bag. I don't have a shopping bag. Okay. So you never uh, braided my hair when I was little, but you'll braid Oh, yes, I did braid your hair. Okay. Then I'm just not there. So really? as it gets okay, smaller and narrower, you want to keep in mind that you want to tie it off. So you want to leave enough um, material so that you can create a knot. And to create a knot, We'll twist it again, but we'll twist all three of them together. So hold on to it. Go, mommy, go. And what I like to do is, actually, I like to put the knot at the you know, second a bit more. This is going to be a little thicker. <laughs> Better than like, just too bad. But they're both yours. So that's a nice strong knot. It's not going anywhere. So you could hang it from here too. Excellent. But basically, yeah, and while it's damp, you want to straighten it out, put it in a flat area to dry so it dries flat and try and keep it as straight as possible. There we go. Voila. Actually, we don't even need the loop here. Just, uh, all we need is to tie it so it doesn't open.